Katie Couric, who sat oh, down with Bill Maher and said the following. Take a listen to this. It's not 30. And I feel like, to your point, Bill, the socioeconomic disparities are a lot and class resentment is a lot what, and anti-intellectualism and elitism is what is driving many of these, these anti-establishment, which are Trump voters, right. or anti-establishment Absolutely. voters. So I think that is a huge problem that we have to address. I mean, globalization and, you know, the transition from an industrial to a technological so, society. I mean, I... I and I don't know if you've ever been jealous of some what someone else has or resentful. It is such a corroding and um, bitter, almost bile <laughs> feeling. Right. Wow. Anti-intellectuals <laughs> who are bitter, <laughs> jealous, and corrosive over their envy for her half. You know, I, I used to call these people uh, elites without mirrors because they couldn't see how awful they were. But I'm beginning to think that they're elite without windows because they can't look outside and see that Trump, for all his flaws, gave us four years without a new war where this guy has set the world on fire. Biden has, in his weakness and his dithering and his complete constant misunderstanding of the world stage has brought us very, very close to a, a widely extended war, not just in the Middle East, but in Ukraine and with Ukraine and Russia. He has his economics. They keep telling us that his economics are great. It's, we just don't know it yet. They keep saying, oh, you know, like inflation is under control. Well, first of all, it's not under control, but their idea of it's being under control is that after, you know, years of it's being extremely high. It's a little less high than it was, but eggs are still, you know, what is it? I don't know, 65% higher than what they were. People see their bills, you know, they see that things are going badly. We see that our cities, you know, they keep telling us how oh, crime is down in our cities. I don't believe it. It's, it's possible that murder is down because they've kind of been policing that, but I don't believe that crime is down in cities where- No, all we're actually to gonna do, do a show on this people. soon. It's a lie. Good. It's truly Good. just a lie because crime spiked. And then in some instances, it fell a little from this enormous spike. It's still above normal. And on top of that, they're not prosecuting anymore. So the cops, many instances, they just don't even arrest the people because they know it's going to be a revolving door out the police station with a no, with a DA who doesn't want to prosecute it. Why fill out the paperwork? Why do it? Anyway, that's another thing. But I'm amazed to hear the disdain. Like the it's that was like another bitter clingers. It was another basket of deplorables. These anti-intellectual, you know, bitter, envious people who are Trump supporters. That's that's the problem. They're they're bitter. I mean, talk about not getting it. Not not even close to getting it. Um, I want to ask you about Molly Ringwald because before you became a star on The Daily Wire, you were a star in Hollywood, uh, screenwriting <laughs> for many big movies and very well celebrated in your writing as an author as well. And Molly Ringwald, who was, you know, the star of the day when I was a kid, you know, Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink and all these amazing movies, 16 Candles, has now spent most of her adult life, as far as I can tell, bashing them, bashing the movies. Um, she came out in 18 and talked about John Hughes and how the movies were too, uh, I can't remember her word, but it was something like too misogynistic and too Me Too-y. And um, she should have spoken out. And now she adds this to her latest running commentary at the Miami Film Festival last weekend. Take a listen. Those movies, the movies that, you know, are I'm so well known for, they were very much of a time, you know? And, and if you were to remake that now, I think it would have to be much more diverse and it would have to be, um, you know, it, you couldn't make a movie that white <laughs> now. No, those movies are really really very white <laughs> and and they don't really represent um you know what it is to be a teenager in a school in america today i don't think i'm, I'm so sick of this nonsense so what you're you're sorry that you were in a film where white people were the dominant characters just stop let us enjoy it. Shut up for that matter. Go away so that we can just enjoy the acting version of you instead of the real. Who gives a shit what Molly Ringwald thinks about anything? Just be quiet. Let your art speak for itself. We enjoyed it and you're making us enjoy it less with your political commentary. You know, th this is a real 
problem. First of all, I have to say, back in the day when she was in her prime, I was madly in love with Molly Ringwald. So my heart is a breaking just a memoir. little bit. I'm, you know, I may yeah. have to recover from this. But you know, there is this thing going on. If if you like movies, stories where everything you watch is an act of preachment, where they're telling you not just what the world is like, which is what art is supposed to do. They're telling you what they believe the world should be. And if you don't like it, there's something wrong with you. So everybody has noticed this. There's no such thing as a white person married to another white person. There's no such thing as a male hero. I recently watched the three body problem, a science fiction, an adaptation on Netflix of a science fiction novel, the novel of which I kind of enjoyed. And it was really interesting because the heroes were hard driving physicists, all of whom were women. And the men were all these kind of slightly neurotic, passive, uh, you know, support staff. And I was watching this and going, I guess this is why they call it fantasy in science fiction, because that's not mm -hmm. really what the world looks like. And it becomes kind of offensive after a while, because yeah. I, I don't care if you want to make a woman a hero. I, I don't care about who, you know, what color the person is. I care about being preached to by people I happen to know are some of the worst people in America. You know, people who are working on their fourth wife, you know, they're driving to their from divorce court and they have to pick up their kid at rehab because they never took care of them. And they're going to stand up and preach to me about what my life should be like and what the world should look like, even though it doesn't look like this. So even when Molly Ringwald is saying this, she is essentially just kowtowing to an elite cabal of mostly white people who yep. are imposing this on artists. So artists are being told what to say. And, I, you know, I'm telling you, Megan, I experienced this only a little bit because I'm so ornery at this point. I just won't change anything. But all I have to do <laughs> In my last novel, I had a, a couple of remarks about uh, transgenderism, a girl going through a phase of transgenderism before returning to sanity, and they wanted me to cut that out. And I said, you know, I'll, I'll pull this book before I cut anything out that is true Good. simply to appease this establishment. It's, it is the establishment. It's the powers that be. So my question is this. If the Academy, if Hollywood if publishing, if the news industry, if the deep state are all telling us one thing, how is we supposed to think that they are serving the powerless, that they are serving the weak? They are the power. They are the elites. And so when Katie Couric says we're anti-elite, what she's talking about is, yeah, we're the people. We're, you know, we're in an uprising against a series of lies where they butchered children, where they forced us to wear masks, they forced us to take medicines we didn't want. Of, of course, we're anti-elite. Our elites stink. Our elites just went through years of screwing things up because a little flu passed through town. We, we get it. You don't like us. We don't like you either. And yeah, she's right. We are anti-elite, but only because our elites are so bad. It doesn't mean yeah. that the people who are voting that for piece Trump of it was aren't fine. elites in themselves. You know? That anti-elite, she's not wrong about that, but the anti-intellectual, yeah. like, okay, right? Because there's just a bunch of dumbasses. <laughs> Discover a holistic wellness solution with Bond Charge, a brand dedicated to optimizing every aspect of your life. Grounded in science and inspired by nature, their evidence-based products cover a broad spectrum of premium wellness items. From enhancing sleep and performance to boosting energy, accelerating recovery, and balancing hormones, Bond Charge offers a diverse range of benefits. Consider the infrared sauna blanket from Bond Charge. They say this thing can burn extra calories and detoxify. This innovative blanket elevates your heart rate, simulating the effects of physical exercise or activity. Bond Charge says sweating during the process helps eliminate heavy metals and toxins from your body. That's how a sauna works too. Setting it up takes less than a minute and it rapidly heats up for a quick and convenient experience. For a limited time, save 15% by visiting Bon, B-O-N, charge.com slash MK and use the coupon code MK. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash MK. Use that coupon code MK to save 15%. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.